Good afternoon. I think we had a, uh, a good workout out there today, and we'll put the uh, we'll put the, the helmets back on tomorrow and and keep going. I think um, I think we made progress today. I'm pleased. I think we made some progress on special teams, and uh, I thought the team looked good. Questions? Any uh, depth updates or any changes that you guys made this week? You know, I'm going to put it. I'm going to put another uh, injury report out a little bit later today, and you'll get an update on everybody. I want to talk to the trainers and. You know, today's a lighter day for us, and we'll speed it back up again tomorrow. But by this afternoon, I'll have a good idea of who's going to go. As far as guys like you know on the depth chart, though, no changes really during the week. Uh, no, no changes on the depth chart. There could be some changes based on availability. How does the uh, potential for bad weather factor into what you may want to do Saturday? Do you take that into account? Is it? We're ready for it every week, and then we, we adjust as the game goes on. You know, certain things I think have a little bit more of an effect than others. I don't know how much effect rain has on a game. I think wind probably has more of an effect. Uh, than rain does, but you know, we'll get out there and we'll have a plan for it, and, and, and we'll go from there. I think we're one of the nice things about being a pro-style offense. I think you, you can you can really adapt your football team to the elements as you go through the year. You've seen the forecast, right? It's supposed to be bad rain. I have. Okay. Still a couple of days out. I'm I'm an optimist. Okay. Kyle, so I know you go into the game thinking four quarter game stars play the whole way. When you're playing the FCS school, do you also make a contingency plan of who you want to get reps in case it gets to that? Because scores in the past for the most part have dictated that there's opportunities maybe for some two and three deep guys. I don't. I don't. And, and I think I feel like it's the same every week. The, whatever players play in the game, play because they deserve to play in the game. And that won't be any different this week. And as we start the game, it'll be zero zero, and we'll go from there. But I don't. I don't spend any time thinking about hypotheticals because to me you know our focus is is on the game and on the first play and and we'll adjust as the game goes on so whether it's this week or next week or the week after is there uh, a premium placed on getting Laviano some snaps in a game that he's not forced into because of an injury to Gary before he gets into that would you like to get him in a game based on the score you don't have you don't have the luxury of creating those situations you know, those situations have to come up because you've earned them. So to me, I don't, I don't, that is not one of the goals for this week. You know, the goal for this week is to be 1-0 and to play well in offense, defense, and special teams. Whatever happens above and beyond that, we won't know until we get into the game. What have you seen out of Chris and now he's in a few weeks as the number two guy? I think every week and every day, really, he gets a little bit more comfortable. I think he's, there's a lot of value to being the guy in the huddle, calling the plays, directing the traffic, taking the reps in practice, and, as the sole number two guy right now, he gets a significant amount of those during the week, and I've seen a steady improvement as he's gone. Well, uh, there's some people talked about the um, how you talked to him after the in Gary's interception and said, "I'm putting you right back in again." So what has given you instilled that confidence in you to, to make him part of that regular rotation, even if he makes a mistake? He claimed he did, but it's it's a repeated performance at a high level, consistency, and that was not a great play for him. But I don't think one play should take away really what has been a, a, a really good spring, a really good summer, and a really good training camp. I, I didn't think that that one play should be the defining factor in, in his immediate career. And I did grab him, and I said, Desmond, I said, I believe in you. And you made a mistake, but I believe in you because you've earned, you've earned me to believe in you by, by your actions. So I, I think he went back in the game, and he performed like I thought he would perform. And I was really pleased with it. And, Young players need to be able to learn from mistakes. If you just yank them out of the game because they made a mistake, it's, it's tough for them to go back in and play as aggressively as you want them to. So Dre wasn't 100% ready last week. How, how tough is it for a freshman when they miss some time in camp? Because obviously that's when a lot of stuff's going in. It, it's really tough for anybody who misses time, and it only gets magnified when you're talking about a freshman because they don't have the, the prior experience to draw from. I, I've been around very few players that can go out and get it done on game day without preparing through the week. And you hear the same thing, and really at the next level, where guys will say, "You know, I got to get out there. I got to practice to be ready to go." Uh, there, there's been the rare exception, but not very many who could draw on the experience. So, uh, I think for a freshman, it only gets magnified. And, and you'll see on the injury report this week, he hasn't been 100 percent this week. So, you know, we'll have to make sure we get him ready for what he can do on Saturday. Surprise! Um, Washington State kicked as much as they did to Canary. I mean, obviously they have confidence in their coverage team, but. I love it when people kick the Janarian, and we, we try to be ready for when they're not going to, whether that means some, side of, some sort of sky kick or just kicking to the other returner. 
I wasn't completely surprised, though, because their, their kickoff team was really good and one of the better kickoff coverage units we've seen on film going into, going into a game. Uh, and they challenged us, and, and I think they did a good job. So you really, I get, my hat is off to them. Can you tell, I know you worked on tackling, you worked on it more this week, can you tell they got plenty of toys to save in the game? It's an emphasis every week on defense. There's only a certain amount of time you have, and there's a lot of things you have to address in practice, and you can't spend, say, all right, we're going to take half the practice day and just work on this. We emphasize our drills every day, and then we emphasize the fundamentals of those drills in every team period we do. So we coach tackling on every play and every rep of the practice, but it's not just a tackling drill because you just don't have time to do that. Uh, the uh, recruiting staff uh, was pretty busy this week sending out mail. What's been the reaction that you've seen so far to that? The reaction's been excellent. Uh, the reaction's been, been really good. And as I've gotten the thank yous for, from quite a few recruits, my message has been pretty consistent to them. Hey, it's important that you understand exactly how important you are to us. And that's just really one sign of it. And there'll be a lot more as we go. And we'll have some recruits at the game this week and, and hopefully more as we go on in the this, in this season. Thanks, Bob. Thank you. Thanks.